people down this way. I'm sure a lot of you have uh, perhaps appreciated, I was talking then about the 1,000cc sidecars, that is the same format for the 500cc solos. The only thing that's different with that is of course uh, the 500 chairs, because if we'd adopted that format for them, all of them would have gone out in the semi-finals, wouldn't they? So uh, they don't get semi-finals, they go straight into a final. Underway with race 19. It is uh, Mel Goodwin that's looking to perhaps get three wins. Well, with him also is Brian Palmer. Both of these two have gone very, very well this afternoon. And of course, I've just been quickly advised that of course Mel can't get three wins first time out. But what he could do is even up the points though, couldn't he? Because if he wins this one and he beats Brian Palmer, then of course that means they go on equal on points because Brian Palmer is the one that has had two wins so far. As he goes round that bottom bend, he's holding second place, but I'm sure he's looking for first. He looks to see if there's a gap on the inside. Oh, well, he stay in front of Brian Palmer. He puts him on even par going into the semi-finals. No, they don't have semis, do they? It puts on even points going into the final, even. Well, as we go round that pit, Ben Mel Goodwin showing that he perhaps has got the legs to stay in front of Brian Palmer as they go up that back place. Opening up quite a gap between them and third place, Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen sitting there. But as we see the checkered flag go, it is going to be another win for outfit number 30, Mel Goodwin. And passenger Gary Rockall. Brian Palmer and passenger Lester Goodwin are not going through with a clean sheet. They indeed get that second place, which means that overall they are equal on points with outfit number 30. Race 19, the official result reads as a win for outfit number 30, Mel Goodwin and Gary Rockall. In second place, number 71, Brian Palmer and Lester Goodwin. Third place, number 78, Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen. In fourth place, number 13, that of course is Keith Baird and Bob Graves. The winning time, 123.35. The speed equating to 53.37. Oh, one rider that could make sure of a place in that final is number seven, Kevin Laird. He sits on 11 points from two rides. We've already seen Brian Palmer and Mel Goodwin. Uh, Richard Piggott is another one that could pick up good points here. Remember, it's only six that go through to the final. And of course, I think probably a lot of you had realised that uh, number 17, Paul Miller, didn't come out in his last ride. There's nothing but problems this afternoon. into that first corner is Simon Baird it's not the best of the front as they go round that first bend Kevin Laird number seven comes through on the inside Richard Piggott though knowing that he's got to score well in this last ride this could be a very important third ride for them City on eight points overall so far this afternoon certainly has pulled out all the stops at the moment but even a win here may not be enough to qualify him for the final, he said. I can't help thinking that Simon's looking over his shoulder thinking, well, where are they going to come from? I'm sure they should have been with me by now. He was looking both ways when he jumped past me. And still nobody has got into a new at the moment. He's just looking trying to close the gap. Still there in second at the moment. Kevin Laird and Dick Olmroy still holding third. And again, Simon looks over his shoulder. It's going to be a good win for Simon Baird if he can hang on to it. Certainly Richard Piggott gets a little bit closer going into the bend, but he certainly doesn't get any advantages on the exit. Going up the bank straight there, he's certainly seen to catch up just that little bit. He goes into this top bend, we may see a challenge from Richard Piggott. The chequered flag being made ready in this. Simon Baird is going to take a win. Richard Piggott gets second. Kevin Light gets third place. 
Jerry Squirrel finishing in fourth. The result reads as a win for outfit number four. So maximum points to Simon Baird and Gary Aldridge. In second place, number 92, that's Richard Piggott and Simon King. Richard Piggott and Simon King in second place, that's number 92. In third place, number 7, Kevin Laird and Dick Ormroyd. Fourth place, number 34, Jerry Squirrel and Derek Page. Fifth place, outfit number 5. Sixth place, number 9. Time, 126.56. The speed, 51.39. 126.56, 51.39. quickly and officially they're trying to work out the points of the 500 chairs but I think that I'll leave that to our uh, official point scorers because let's turn our attention to the 500cc competition this really has been fast and furious this afternoon well who've we got going in race 21 well of course Ben Howe had a win first time out and uh, missed out second time Simon Cross he uh, is sitting on where is he? On 14 points at the moment. Well, that's uh, interesting. Line 14. He had a win the second time now, so we wonder if there was a change. If we go into that first bend, I can see Simon Cross moving through from third place, perhaps up in a second. Steve Bishop has made the best of it. Robbie Fuller is up there in second, but Simon Cross has gone round him already. As they look to go into that bottom bend, Simon Cross chose to go wide. He goes up the back straight, going after Steve Bishop. And he comes through on the inside of Steve Bishop. He gets himself to the front once again. Well, he comes off that top bend, forcing Steve Bishop to go wide. Robbie Fuller, a good ride in third place. Good to see that Ben Howe's going much better this time. He's up in fifth place, just behind Mark Seabright. In second place, number 34, Steve Bishop. In third place, number 16, Robbie Fuller. Fourth place, number 167, Mark Seabright. Fifth place, number 87, Ben Howe. Sixth place, number 31. Seventh place, number 179. Eighth place, 174. And ninth place, number two. The winning time, 113.84. That equates to a speed of 60.24. So, we start with the first of our third leg ride, maintaining that average speed above 60 miles an hour. The speed, 60.24. The time, 113.84. So, over the page we go. Race 22 in your program. A chance to see in action once again. Paul Fry, Graham Brown, Trevor Banks, Tony Atkin, Dean Gart, Mitchell Gordon, Darren Shand, Alan Harmer and... I think that's going to be Tommy Palmer replacing Dave Mears. Well, the other thing, of course, was whether Darren Shand has been able to uh, sort machinery out. I can't see him on the start line, so that obviously was a fairly serious mechanical problem that Darren had when he came to the start line for his second leg ride. Tommy Palmer is indeed on the start line. first bend. Dry on the inside though as they come round off that bend. It is Paul Fry that's got to the front. Dean Garn's up there as well. Now oh, Trevor Banks holding second. He tries to get close to Paul Fry as they go round that bottom bend. He's another one that might take a look right in the outside line. This is how long as they go round. Dean Garn trying to stay with those two, but Paul Fry in tremendous form. Down past us for the second time. Trevorbank still there in second. Dean Garn gets a bit closer this time though. Tony Atkins holding fourth place, but look at that scrap for second spot. Dean Garn still up to Trevorbank's 
got a bend. He stayed there with him. The, the entrance to the bend that he's got looks to make his advantage. Uh, watch to see what happens this time as they go into the bottom bend. Lowe's is up once again. Oh, no, let Mulvai get away from them. I don't know if that's going to be enough to get up the door. They come round towards the checkered flag. It's going to be another win. All four flying number 55. Second place, Louis Hanks hangs on to it. Dean Garn gets third. Tony Atkins in fourth. And that looks to me like was Derek Shand in fifth place. So, uh... A little bit of duff information for me. He was on that start line, but I actually couldn't pick him out even with the binoculars. In for rider number 55, that of course is Paul Fry. In second place, number five, Trevor Banks. In third place, number 161, that's Dean Garton. And fourth place, number 10, that of course is Tony Atkin. In fifth place, number 214, Darren Shand. At sixth place, number 21, that's the reserve Tommy Palmer. In seventh place, number nine. Eighth place, number 122. And ninth place, 121. The winning time, 113.46. That again keeps it above the 60 mile an hour average, 60.55. Race 23. This, of course, is the last of the qualifying rides for the 500cc solo class. Oh, what a cracking one it promises to be. Clayton Williams, Steve Dorr, Steve Stofield, Lee Lanham, they're all up there with a chance of getting at least into the semis, if not into the finals at the end of the day. Oh, he leads as they come round that first bend. Clayton Williams has gone with him, though. Well, Lee Lanham is up in third, a battle going on for that third place. Steve Dorr is up there in fourth place. Peter Lloyd holding fifth as they go down the main straight. Lee Schofield. Trying to break away from Clayton Williams. These two have been up against each other many, many times before. And we know that Clayton would love to ride those outside lines. He's pulling it in a bit tight, so perhaps he's realising that uh, it isn't going to be the outside line that plays this afternoon. Perhaps Lee Lanham's going well in third place. He's not losing ground on those front two. Steve Dorr not being able to show on the back wheel of Lee Lanham. But Peter Lloyd's staying there with them. There's a gap then opened up between them and sixth place. As it comes to the finishing line, it is Steve Schofield that maintains the maximum. Three rides and three wins. Wayne Williams finishes in second. Lee Lanham holding on to third, even though there was a last-ditch effort from Steve Dorr for that fourth place. Peter Lloyd gets fifth. A tremendous ride from Steve Schofield this afternoon. He really is on good form at the moment. The pits from Steve Schofield there. He is certainly going to be a man that's going to be difficult to catch. A win for rider number three, Steve Schofield. In second place, number seven. That, of course, is Clayton Williams. In third place, number one, Lee Lanham. In fourth place, number 110, Steve Dorr. In fifth place, number four, Peter Lloyd. Sixth place, number 17. Seventh place, 04. Eighth place, 19. Ninth place, 73. The winning time, 112.63. That's an equivalent of 61.24 miles per hour average. Well, he's tremendously quick and he certainly is going to take some catching. So a good ride here could confirm his place in the semi. And then good points in the semi may well get him through into that big final at the end of the day. Well, problems for Steve Smith by the look of it as he pulls back off the start line. Well, machinery now running. And uh, John Halsey, one of those that's also last to come into line. Mark Edwards has got this outside gate. 
gate at the moment. I think the middle of the gate has favoured these outfits. Well, John Horsey being told he's uh, second to the outside and uh, instinctively John Horsey tries to get as close as he can to the middle of the gate. That's right next to Jerry Adams. Well, watching to see the tapes go and as they break, I can see that Steve Smith has made a great start on the inside. Well, Mark Edwards has made a brilliant start as well right from the outside as they go into that first bend. But what is most interesting of all is that John Halsey has missed the start. He's at the back of the field, but not Away, we could see an interesting race in prospect because Mark Edwards and Nick Rogers are in second. John Halsey has now got close to them in third place, but we know that outfit of John Halsey is very, very quick at the moment, and he, of course, has had two rides and two wins so far. Mark Edwards and Nick Rogers still knowing second. They go past us, that's how the one, two, three stays. Jerry Adams back there in fourth place, watching what's going on in front of him. But a good ride this from John Halsey, looking to see where the gaps are going to come from, John Halsey. Tries to hold it tight on this bottom bend. Well, has it paid off? Not quite this time. Well, again, he's got a tight line going into this top bend. He's forced Mark Edwards to go wide. Mark Edwards is going down the back straight. He's right up on the bend. And as they come to the line, it's going to be Steve Smith that takes it. I think Mark Edwards is going fast enough. And there's problems for John Halsey. Well, he finishes in third place, but certainly he and his passenger had their arms in the air. So they've hit some sort of mechanical problem. We hope it's nothing serious. Well, Steve Smith making sure that he stays right up there amongst the top point scorers. Ride in their qualifying legs for those sidecar drivers. A win for outfit number two, that's Steve Smith and Keith Wall. In second place, outfit number eight, that of course is Mark Edwards and Nick Walters. In third place, number 13, John Halsey and Jason Glenny. Fourth place goes to number 55, that, of course, is Jerry Adams and Paul Baysby. And fifth place, number 112. No other finishes there. The winning time, 132.66. 132.66, an average speed of 54.41. A chance here for Gary Jackson, perhaps, to pick up some points. He's on 10 at the moment. But also, as I'm saying that, Phil Pittman has uh, got himself on eight points so far. Mick Cave and Mick Stace, they're back down the point scoring field of course he's got to the front number 98 Joe Mogg passenger Joe Smith have made some very good starts but they've tended to lose out as the race has developed and this time it's Phil Pittman and Miles Simmons that have got into the front and they start to open gap Jackson has got Mick Cade contending before he can even go after Phil Pittman, but Phil Pittman in his own right going very, very well at the moment. Gary Jackson trying to get through on the inside of Mick Cade. He does just that going into that top bend. But I think he's got his work cut out to try and catch Phil Pittman. Miles Simmons still holding the lead from Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. Mick Cave and Mick Stace still there in third. Well, there's problems for Mick Cave once again as he goes into the centre of the circuit. But as we see the chequered flag go, Phil Pittman and Miles Simmons, I'm sure, get a place in the semi final from that ride. Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams finishing his second. They've done their point scoring no harm whatsoever. The official for outfit number 90, Phil Pittman and Miles Simmons. In second place, number 23, that's Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. Third place, number 98, that of course is Joe Mogg and Joe Smith. 
No other finishes there. The winning time, 133.55. 133.55 and the speed 53.89. and perhaps a lot of eyes once again on Ira Matthews but we don't know what's happened this time he's got a very good field in front of him oh this could certainly be a very interesting one because you can see the uh, Russell Ring is up there in second place but Roger Misa is after that place as both of those two go wide and Roger Misa has in fact put it over on that bottom bend well as the race is brought to a halt you can see that uh, We've got an outfit on that bottom bend. In the interest of safety, of course, obviously the uh, race being brought to a halt. So those riders will, of course, have to make their way back to the start line once again. Oh, I'm sure that one or two of the riders that went in race 26 will be... Uh, I think perhaps they could drop out and go into this one because they might get a chance of scoring better points. But uh, as per the program, as we get underway, you can see that Tim Bennett has made a very good start. Dave Steer has got just in front of him, though, as they go into that bend. Vaughan Roberts is up there in second place. opportunity to score some good points here as they go down that back straight and into the bottom corner leading from Vaughan Roberts in second place oh Tim Benny going very very wide and Andy Norris has come through on the inside of him or oh, has he? <laughs> well that certainly didn't change the Orchard have got away from the rest of the field as they come up past me. They had a terrific scrap down at the Wimble Whopper last week. They left it possibly a little bit late to make a challenge for the lead. They ended up on the rocky in second place. They really have off that bottom bend into the last lap this time still leading from Vaughan Roberts and Alan Berry in second place good to see Alan Berry back out on the grass track circuits again passenger in four Vaughan Roberts this afternoon Tim Bennett and Andy Norris still having that scrap for third place watch to see them come round this bottom bend for the last time Dave Steer it is that takes it outfit number 17 Vaughan Roberts and Alan Berry take second place and a great scrap to the line for that third place, but I think Tim Bennett has just done enough to hang on. Race 27, of course, this one the result of. The official result reads as a win for outfit number 17, Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. They, of course, take six points from that ride in second place number 14. That's Vaughan Roberts and uh, Alan Berry. In third place, it was just on the line number 12, Tim Bennett and Steve Hargreaves. And in fourth place, number 46, Andy Norris and Eddie Elvis. The winning time, 130.71, 55.58, the average speed. And a very quick mar message for the marshals and first aid officials that the two laps practice we spoke about a moment ago is not going to take place. So as soon as this race is finished, we will be going straight into the interval. Well, I say before this race is finished, of course, this one started off being a very interesting race indeed, and there's no reason why it shouldn't be any more the interesting as we get underway. It's Russell Ng that's made the best of the starts as they go into this first bend. Rob Wilson has again made a very good start. He's got himself to the front. Russell Ng goes after him. Ironman is up in third place and Roger Misa back in fourth place at the moment, but going well and indeed great to see him back out there as we watch them come round this pit bend Russell Ng trying to get the lead from Rob Wilson those two outfits almost together as they come past me Rob Wilson and Tony Miles going very very well now as they come round the pit bend doing everything they possibly can to hold off the challenge from Russell Ng and Paul Urich Oh, Russell and Paul have had uh, maximum rides so far and there was something flew off Rob Wilson's bike as he come past me. I think the bank Well, that raises a 
It's a very difficult question because it means that Rob Wilson is now well down on the points as we go into this uh, last lap. It is rustling that's leading. Of course, a lot of these sidecar drivers are happy about it. just don't have the wall strength that the novelies have and it causes all sorts of arguments and confusion but the checkered flag goes no argument about who it is that wins rustling takes his third win of the afternoon either matthews and will jones have to be content with a second place so they pick up only five points from their last ride but overall that puts them on 17 points Russelling and Paul Urich pick up another six points, taking them to top of the tree, a maximum 18 points. Four, outfit number six, that's Russelling and Paul Urich. In second place, number 15, Ivor Matthews and Will Jones. In third place, number 21, that of course... Oh. That should of course be 51. My apologies there. Third place, 51 to Roger Misa and Shane Lapham. And in fourth place, number 25, Robbie Wilson and Colin Hill. The time was 133.04. 133.04. The speed, 54.18. For Tony Atkin and Mark Seabright. And still close in there is number 87, Ben Howe, on 19 points. 20 to 30, 8 points only. These semi-finals are going to be so important to all these riders. It's going to be a tough couple of races. And I think from the racing we've seen in the qualifying heats, they promise to be equally as good as many finals we see around the country. Well, the riders are already there for the first semi-final. Away we go. And as they lead the line, we're looking for the green leathers to see it go through for him. goes into that first bend, he's leading as they come round off that first bend, it's Clayton Williams that's gone after him. Uh, Lee Lanham is right up there in third place, Steve Bishop in fourth, Gary Lobb has had a good start and is right up there in fifth place at the moment. But look at Clayton Williams, look at his knees go through all the way, he's going around that back place. Last year's go through, dies into this top corner. Clayton Williams right now with him. Lee Lanham holding third place and Roman Steve Bishop is in Fourth place, Gary Lobb is still holding on to that fourth place. Oh, I should say fifth place, isn't he? Gary Atkins is in fifth place. Ben Hill right up there in seventh place at the moment. Lee Lamham now closing up on Craig Williams though for that third place. Well, we want to see what happens as they go into the last lap because Steve Schofield has got away. Clayton Williams in second at the moment, but Lee Lamham pushing very, very hard indeed. Looking for that four next to the center of the circuit, but it is the East Coast that wins, he takes the maximum. Great Williams gets second, Lee Lanham hangs on to third, Steve Bishop in th fourth place, Gary Long in fifth, and Tony Atkins in sixth. We must have been watching closely what was happening with that roller because he is absolutely flying. A win in the first semi-final, race 28, the official result reads as a win for number three. In second place, number seven, Clayton Williams. In third place, number one, Lee Lanham. In fourth place, number 34, Steve Bishop. In fifth place, number 17, Gary Lobb. In sixth place, number 10, Tony Atkin. In seventh place, number five, Trevor Banks. In eighth place, number 31. Ninth place, number 122. The time was 111.66. That equates to a speed of 62.08 miles per hour as an average around this circuit. to go into the bottom bend. Dean Garten leads the rest of the pack holding third place at the moment. He's got Steve Dorr bringing down his third place. So look at Paul Fry going. Now this one's going to be interesting to see what sort of time Paul Fry can put up. We know what sort of time Scoey put up in the first semi-final. How close is Paul Fry going to get to it? 
Simon Cross, still there in second place. That, of course, is going to give very good points, and he knows that that's enough to qualify for the final. Riders are on strong points. We'll let riders go away for them. They know that they've got enough points to get through the final. What a final that promises to be. Peter Lloyd right up there in fifth place at the moment. Mark C. Mike going well in sixth place. Those two are riders who are a bit further down the well, as we see the jacket flag go, it happens so quickly, doesn't it? But Paul Fry takes it. He gets the maximum 10 points. Simon Cross gets second place. Steve Thor finishing in... Oh, Dean Gunn, sorry, finishing in third. Followed home by Steve Thor in fourth. No, reads as a win for number 55, Paul Fry. In second place, number 14, Simon Cross. Third place goes to number 161, Dean Garton. Fourth place, number 110, Steve Dorr. Fifth place, number four, Peter Lloyd. Sixth place, number 167, Mark Seabright. Seventh place, number 16. Eighth place, number 214. Ninth place, 04. Tenth place, number nine. The winning time, 112.52, 112.52, that equates to 61.34. This is the first semi-final, same format, it's points that get them through to that final at the end of the day. But of course, as we look at the points situation, and we look at the riders going in race 30, Russelling and Paul Urich on maximum 18 points into this semi-final. Number 15, Ivor Matthews and Will Jones this afternoon are on 17 points at the moment. Number 51, Roger Meester and Shane Lapham on 15 points. Number 90, Phil Pittman and Miles Simmons on 14 points. Mark Edwards is on 13 points and those really are the riders that know they've got to perform well in this semi-final to get a place in the final. It's Roger Meester that's gone into the bend in first place. Carl Ivor Matthews well down the field at the moment. Mark Edwards is up in second place. Russell Egan holding third. Bill Pittman in fourth. And it is Ivor Matthews and Will Jones that are back in fifth place. Watch to see them come tight round that bottom bend though. As Mark Edwards goes after Roger Misa. Russell Ing still up there in third place. Bill Pittman not being able to make up any ground on him as they stay in the same sort of position they were. but there's no way through at the moment. That's the order they stay in as they stay in that pit bend as they come up past me for the second time. Roger Misa getting away from Mark Edwards and Nick Walters. Rustling and Paul Urich, I think, getting a bit closer. But what is it when it's to close up already on Russelling. Oh, I'm sure that Russell will realise he's being pushed by Ivor and now we're starting to turn the power on. He's sitting comfortable on points, of course, at the moment. He's on 18 points, so only needs formality of points in this semi-final to get back into fourth place. That may well not be enough. It's Ivor Matthews that's going to push him for that as the checkered flag goes. Roger Misa wins it. Mark Edwards and Nick Walters take a brilliant second place. Now that's certainly going to be an interesting one because they were on 13 points before this semi-final. That could well put them right the way up there. Result reads as a win for outfit number 51, Roger Misa and Shane Lapham. In second place, number eight, Mark Edwards and Nick Walters. In third place, outfit number six, that of course is Russelling and Paul Urich. In fourth place, number 15, Ivor Matthews and Will Jones. In fifth place, number 90, Phil Pittman and Miles Simmons. In sixth place, number 14, that's Vaughan Roberts and passenger Alan Berry. The winning time, 130.84. 55.50 the average speed, 130.84, 55.50. to the second semi-final we're looking to see who it is that makes it to this big sidecar final at the end of the day we we're watching to see them go and as they break and see that John Hawes he's made a good start but best of all is Joe Mogg Joe Mogg gets to that first corner in front Steve Smith and Keith Wall go to on the inside of John Hawes well, the 
there's problems for John Halsey as he pulls up going down that back straight. Now that's going to make life interesting because he's on 16 points at the moment, John Halsey. Oh, we watch to see the rest of the action as Steve Smith and Keith Wall get to the front and stay there as they go down that back straight. a good result in this one. They in fact could get themselves into the final. My calculations are correct, but it's all getting too close on points at the moment. Watching to see what sort of points Gary Jackson scores, because he's on 15 points at the moment. If he can get up into third place, I think overall that's going to make it easier. I can't even keep up with it now. I think I'll stay with you is the fact that Steve Smith and Keith Wall, even though they've changed machinery, are going superbly well. Dave Steer is up in the second. Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams still holding third. Robbie Wilson and Colin Hill having another good ride in the fourth place. It's going to get very interesting indeed in the point situation. C. Smith and Keith Wall take the win. Well, Dave Steer and Andy Orchard take second, Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams third, Robbie Wilson and passenger Colling Hill take fourth. And I wonder if that point that John Halsey has got is going to be enough. She result reads as a win for outfit number two. That, of course, is Steve Smith and Keith Wall, followed home in second place by number 17, Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. In third place, number 23, that, of course, is... Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. In fourth place, number 25, that's Robbie Wilson and Colin Hill. In fifth place, number 98, Joe Mogg and Joe Smith. And sixth place there, just finishing, number 13, John Halsey and Jason Glennie. The time was 131.52, the speed 55.08. For the 500cc sidecar final, and this is where we change things. This is where our finishing marshal, being waved at by the crowd at the moment, has to be totally on the ball. He's got six laps to sit and watch. We, of course, have got six laps to enjoy the finals. All six laps, 500cc, 500cc solo, and right hand 1000cc sidecars. Six laps, the finals will be run over and qualifying for the 500cc sidecar final. Number 30, that of course is Mel Goodwin and Gary Rockall. Number 71, Brian Palmer and Lester Goodwin. Number 7, Kevin Laird and Dick Olmroyd. Number 78, Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen. Number 92, Richard Piggott and Simon King. Number 9, Mark Stubberfield and Nick Harbour. Those are the six crews. We forget the points, we forget the qualifying. It's now first across the line, wins the tri top trophy. It's a straight race over six laps. All the hard work of qualifying has now been done. Our equal on points coming to this final were Mal Goodwin and Brian Palmer. And I didn't think that looked a very good start. Indeed, I can see the two outfits. 15, 17, and 23. The reserve for that race is rider number eight. Well, I hope you all managed to catch those quickly. I'll try and repeat them before we start the particular races, but we get underway now with the 500cc sidecar final, and it's Brian Palmer that's made a terrific start as he gets up that back straight. Richard Piggott goes after him. Now, oh, Goodwin is up there as well on the inside of Richard Piggott, but it's Brian Palmer and Lester Goodwin that have got away from Mel Goodwin and Gary Rockall. Those two outfits away then from Richard Piggott and Simon Keith. They're holding on to third place at the moment but under pressure from Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen. So those two are coming together. But Brian Palmer in great form at the moment. Getting away is he perhaps? Lester Goodwin working hard on the outfit of Brian Palmer. Mel Goodwin desperately trying to close that gap. He's gone for the tight line on that bottom bend. Brian Palmer on the quicker outside line, I think. But he's blocked the back straight. The gap is exposing. We watch to see when they come round by you. Remember, this is six laps they've got to race over. Down past us they go once again. This battle for third place is still on. Richard Piggott 
and Simon King still holding third at the moment, but Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen still trying to get that third place. Seven there, the single boy, back in the fifth place of the road, making up no ground on those two, fighting for that third place. It's all now starting to get a little bit spread out as Brian Palmer and Lester Goodwin still pile the pressure on into the bottom straight once again they go. Indeed, up that back straight, you can see that Brian Palmer and Lester Goodwin well and truly have things under control. Richard Figgins have still won that battle for third place as they now go into the last lap as they come past me. Brian Palmer well and truly in control, but Mel Goodwin won't be giving up at all. He'll be trying every inch of the way to try and gain some ground on Brian Palmer. He's certainly secured that second place as he goes up that back straight. But Lionel Cox now has come back at Richard Piggott. He's going to make an effort on the last bend as they go up the back straight. It's all starting to get close. And Lionel Cox goes through on the inside of Richard Piggott. But as we see the checker flag, it's Brian Palmer and Lester Goodwin that win. Mel Goodwin gets second. But Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen take third place. And I'm sure that Richard Piggott thought he'd done enough to hold on to that third place. But a good ride from Lionel Cox and... Grace Hagen, but overall, the one place they want to be is first over the line this afternoon. The National Battle of Hastings in the 500cc sidecar competition. That honour goes to Brian Palmer and, of course, his new passenger, Lester Goodwin. race 32 it was a win for number 71 Brian Palmer and Lester Goodwin in second place number 30 Mel Goodwin and Gary Rockall in third place number 78 Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen in fourth place number 92 Richard Piggott and Simon King fifth place number nine Mark Stubberfield and Nick Harbour and in sixth place, number seven, Kevin Lyde and Dick Olmroyd. The time was 2.08.54. 2.08.54. The speed, 53.06. 53 53.06, the average speed. Well, watching to see perhaps where Steve Schofield goes, he would have had first choice of gate, being the top point scorer. Clayton Williams was let out fairly early as well. Paul Fry had second choice of gate, and interestingly enough, he's gone right on the inside. Now, Simon Cross is elected to go there as well. Steve Dorr lining up alongside Steve Schofield. The rest of the riders now coming out, Lee Lanham, Steve Bishop, they've all gone for this inside as well. So perhaps uh, the riders thinking that the inner gates are proving to be a slight advantage. Whether that will pay off or not, we will see. And ironically, it's Clayton Williams that's gone right for the far outside. Trevor Banks, the last one to emerge from the pits. So uh, Trevor, unfortunately, not really getting a choice. It's just whatever gaps are left. And he indeed is elected to go just on the inside of Clayton Williams. So the riders now being called into line. We want to see for the tapes to go as we get... Well, I was thinking they were pushing the tapes and indeed the car for the course not happy with that. And away we go, and Steve Stover has made an absolute liar of a game. Bill Pyle has just gone after to go into that first bend. It's those two that come out in front of Trevor Banks in third at the moment. Simon Cross is up there as well. Clayton Williams has gone for the long outside run. And it's Clayton Williams that's right on the outside of Paul Fry going round that bottom corner. Those two together for second place, but it's Steve Stover that's down in front. Bill Pyle is there in second place. Simon Cross starting to get in on the action, but it's Steve Schofield that's got away. He's looked so powerful this afternoon. Nobody's managed to get near him so far, and it's Paul Fry that's now got the task to try and do it over six laps. He'll try every inch of the way as he comes round off that top end. Is he getting closer? Scurry looks over his shoulder. He knows there may well be a challenge coming. 
Simon Cross has got fast Clayton Williams to get up into third place. And as we go down the back straight, I was hoping to see perhaps that gap close up a little bit, but he sees Schofield, who's absolutely tremendous. As he comes off that drop end, he is absolutely flying this afternoon. Paul Fry doing everything he possibly can to get on terms with him. As they go down the bank straight once more, it's Fry that's just desperately trying to do something to get it. Coming to Steve Schofield. But look at the speed of Steve Schofield. Over his shoulder and looks once again. And Fry that's over his shoulder. Time across it is that's in third place. Clayton Williams holding fourth. In front of that battle for fifth place. And Peter Lloyd looks to have got the better of Trevor Banks now for fifth. But as we see the Cheshire flag going up. What a tremendous victory for Steve Schofield. He wanted to win this one. He knew that he had Simon Cross here. He knew that he had Paul Fry here. He's got the victory he wanted as he goes over the line. A great, great ride from Steve Schofield this afternoon. Can anybody get close to him as the end of the season beckons? Well, Paul Fry, you've got to say, certainly tried. But what a tremendous rider Steve Schofield is. laps remember the official result reads as a win for Steve Schofield number three in second place number 55 Paul Fry in third place number 14 Simon Cross fourth place number seven Clayton Williams fifth place number four Peter Lloyd sixth place number five Trevor Banks seventh place number one Lee Lanham eighth place number 34 Steve Bishop Ninth place, 161, Dean Garton. 10th place, 110, Steve Dore. The winning time, remember this was for six laps, 151.30. It's an average for those six laps of 61.28 miles per hour. Four. Number 51, Roger Misa and Shane Lapham. Number 15, Ivor Matthews and Will Jones. Number 17, Dave Orchard, <laughs> I was going to say Dave Orchard, then I should say Dave Steer and Andrew Orchard, shouldn't I? And 23, Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. Well, obviously the officials of the circuit telling me that due to the amount of dust, in the interest of safety, the sidecar final being kept to four laps. So as they have been racing all afternoon, four laps, our finishing marshal has been advised. Away we go then with the big sidecar final to finish the day as they get underway. It's Roger Misa that's made the best of the start. Steve Smith is right there with him as they go into that top bend. It's Russell Ingers on the inside, Steve Smith on the outside. that back straight. Rustling is very, very quick into this bottom corner. Tries to get underneath Steve Smith as they come round that bottom bend. Steve Smith closes the gap. Steve Smith trying to get up the inside of Roger Mesa. But Roger turning the power on as he goes into that top bend. He flies around that top corner. Steve Smith still there in second. is holding second, Russelling and Paul Urich still holding third, Ivan Matthews and Will Jones holding fourth at the moment, Roger Misa still keeping the power on as he goes past us for the second time. Oh, looking for a change perhaps in that second place, Steve Smith working very, very hard, and he's just got two of Russelling's bikes in second place. Oh, it's Russell that's holding third though, and he'll be looking for the gaps on the inside. Steve Smith driving hard as he comes up past us. Well, Ivor Matthews not being able to close on them. It's the corners that Ivor gets the advantage. He's coming out of that top bend. He might get the better drive. But Russell has kept it on as he goes down that back straight. Roger Misa comes round off this bottom corner. And you'll see the checkered flag this time. This is something I didn't expect to see him do this afternoon. He takes the checkered flag. Steve Smith and Keith Wall get second. Russelling and Paul Urich on their other bike finishing third place. 
Ivor Matthews and Peter, well, I was going to nearly said Peter Jones, but I meant Will Jones, of course. He finishes in fourth place. Well, a tremendous sidecar result. Who would have predicted that Roger Misa could have won that final the way that outfit went over earlier on this afternoon? Tremendous to see what a character he is beginning to show. He's been racing for many, many years, and indeed this is yet another title that he can add to his array of titles, the Battle of Hastings. Well, as the sidecars make their way down past you on the far side, let's give you the official result of that sidecar final. A win, of course, for number 51, Roger Misa and Shane Lapham. In second place, number two, Steve Smith and Keith Wall. Third place goes to number six, Russelling and Paul Urich. In fourth place, number 15, Ivor Matthews and Will Jones. Fifth place, number 23, Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. And sixth place, number 17, Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. The winning time was 130.28, the speed 55.84. Now she's not going to say anything, is she? All she's going to do is agree with me, so if I get it wrong, she'll quickly kick me in the shins, I expect. Well, the people from the air ambulance crew couldn't be here this afternoon, so a check has been sent off to them. But of course, somebody that we have to have here is the St. John's Ambulance. So if I could ask for a representative from the St. John's Ambulance to come up. And obviously, thank you for your applause. The presentation of a check to the St. John's Ambulance. And one thing I haven't done today is I haven't told anybody how much is on that check. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is quickly open that envelope. <laughs> because I hope this is going to be a, a much a surprise to me as it is to the people out here, because I didn't know what was in there anyway. Okay. And sir, how much is going to St John's Ambulance? £1,000, thank you. Thank you. So that's absolutely terrific. £1,000 you just heard is going to St John's Ambulance. Your service is invaluable to us, sir, and thank you for appreciating it in that way. Well, there's one more check here for Grasser, it says on the front. Grass Track Riders and Supporters Association. That's what it's supposed to mean. I'm sure that's what it is. Elsa, we better call up a representative from Grasser. Di Wayne, I've been asked for you to come up. And most embarrassed of all, I don't know what Di's official title is. <laughs> oh, Di does all the hard work behind the scenes. She's the secretary of Grasser. You've got to do the same thing, Di. You've got to open it up in front of us because we haven't got a clue what's on there. Remember, a £1,000 went to St John's Ambulance, you might get 10p. <laughs> £500. Superb. £500 has gone to Grasser as well, as a £1,000 going to the St John's Ambulance. It's a very well deserved causes. And of course, there was also 500 went on to the, um, what was it called? Kent Air Ambulance. Kent Air Ambulance Service. Right, £500 went off there as well. In all, if my arithmetic is correct, a grand sum of £2,000 was raised by you, the supporters, back here in June. Tremendous achievement from you all. Thank you all very much indeed. Right, we've seen plenty of good racing this afternoon. It was not an easy event to win. I'm glad somebody came up here to sort out the trophies because I'm bound to have got them all mixed up and given the wrong person the wrong trophies. I said a hard fought event. It was called the National Battle of Hastings. And if we look back through the history books, there's been some tremendous battles in this part of the country. So my history teachers tell me. I'm not going to bore you with all that sort of detail. What I'm going to say is that I think we've got some very worthy victors coming up here this afternoon in the 500cc sidecar competition, finishing in third place, Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen. <laughs> Finishing just in front of them in second place. They pushed it all the way. But second place it is this afternoon for Mel Goodwin and Gary Rockle.
But as I kept saying this afternoon, there is one place in where they all want to be, and that of course is up here collecting first prize. The first prize trophy in the 500cc sidecar competition this year goes to Brian Palmer and Lester Goodwin. to do all afternoon is getting up the steps and he didn't do that successfully. <laughs> That's it, they've got to get the sponsor's hat on before they have any photographs taken. Huh? Well done, Win. And as always, I think I could have a quick word with Raz before he dashes off down the other end. Raz, you'll have to come up here because they tell me if I get too near to that thing, I'll start exploding or something. <laughs> Tremendous ride. If I remember back to the championships that was held here, you did well that afternoon, didn't you? Was it as hard then? Oh, it's always hard, isn't it? It's getting harder. Um, <laughs> Supend. <Stupendous>. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, it's not just me. He's. <laughs> Full marks to Andrew, this track is, uh, has really held up well and it's not easy running a grass track and especially when so many people point the fingers but you have to take your hat off to him because uh, there was superb racing on, the, on a track that you can race on, it's a pleasure to ride on. Um, I'm very pleased with the win, I'm very pleased when I won the British finals, uh, I just hope I can do it again this year. No, next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll wait for next year, guys. Well, here we are, our winners in the 500cc sidecar competition, Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen, Mel Goodwin and Gary Rockall, Brian Palmer and Lester Goodwin. Well, we move on because the 500cc solo competition was indeed a very hard-fought competition. Well, I think when we watched practice this morning, we really couldn't believe how fast these solo boys were going. Everybody seemed to be absolutely flying. They seemed to love the conditions of the track. The track looked perfect. It produced some good racing all afternoon. Eventually, we did get 10 finalists. And even then, we were arguing in the caravan out of those 10 finalists who it would be fought between. I think a lot of you all sort of did the same as us. It's probably going to be scary, but you couldn't really be sure, could you? Finishing in third place he is, of course, our reigning British Masters champion. If we can call up Simon Cross. Well, we've got third place up here, Simon Cross. We need, of course, the man that never gives up. He's finished in second this afternoon, but I think what you've got to say about this particular rider, he always gives you 100% effort. In fact, at times it seems 200%. But this afternoon, he's finished in second. It is, of course, Paul Fry. Great big build up like that, and he's not even over here, look. <laughs> well, I thought we'd done enough of the other presentations. I thought he's bound to be over here. <laughs> oh, he's coming, they tell me. You mean he's coming over here for the presentation? And you can read into that what you want. <laughs> it doesn't seem fair to move on to first, does it, when we only got second up here? I'm waiting to see him appear from around the side of that beer tent. <laughs> now he's starting to make it look like he's never won anything before, isn't it? But I know that we've seen this man up here on uh, many presentations. Well, he doesn't seem to want to appear, does he? He's here. He's here. He is here. Are you sure? 
Oh, I can see him now. Look, he doesn't want to make too much of an effort to get here. He's uh, used all his energy racing this afternoon, I suspect. <laughs> uh, why not? Another round of applause. He's finishing second this afternoon. A tremendous effort from Paul Fry. Now what I've got to find out is whether we've got our winner over here, have we? Has anybody spotted him yet? <laughs> and I bet he's still over in the pits as well. Well, we'll give it a try. We've got to give it the uh, traditional try if we can get our winner over here. In the 500cc solo competition, unbeaten I think is the only thing I can say about this rider. He was unbeaten in his heats. He won the semi. And of course, he won the final in tremendous style. That immense speed, I mean, averaging 61 miles an hour around this circuit takes some doing. It is, of course, everybody's favourite, Steve Schofield! <laughs> well, didn't I just know that was going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> Paul Rettens is still over there counting his money, but I think it's more getting the bike loaded, isn't it? <laughs> well, I hope somebody's gone to get him. For a bit later on. Now, I can see that I've got most of the sidecar crews here, so we'll give it a start. So I hope that makes sense with everybody. If we can keep the other two up here for a few moments, though, because we get a round of applause for all three of them at the end. The sidecar competition, well, one track that uh, is a little bit daunting to some of the sidecar drivers, and those that come from around the country, what you may not appreciate is that a lot of the drivers do prefer racing with the traditional knobbly tyres on the back wheel. Now, in the southeastern centre, they've made a ruling that 1,000cc sidecars only use trials tyres or speedway tyres. Now, that can make a lot of difference because it's very, very difficult to get grip. Well, in the sidecar competition this afternoon, I think you'll agree it was a very, very hard-fought event. And look at that. As I start to go onto the sidecars, we've now got Steve Schofield turned up. <laughs> Take your way through, Steve. Yes, we do need you up here. Yes, that is the one I believe for him. <laughs> oh, look at that. We're getting up there eventually. <laughs> Steve, I know that they'll, uh, they'll want to take the photographs of you with the trophies as well. And if I can move out of the way, as Andrew does the same as me, we don't want our employees to know we were down here this Sunday. <laughs> well, Steve, don't rush off because I, I've got to really have a quick word with you. There was a lot of people obviously waiting here to see you on that grand build-up for a presentation, but you were packing the bike away. It has been a tremendous weekend for you, hasn't it? You know that the Speedway team you ride for has won the British League Championships, and now you've had a great win like this this afternoon. You must be feeling absolutely terrific. Yeah, um, I think the track staff here done really good uh, work on the track. As Andrew said, he's got the roller on it, so I just I think he deserves a round of applause for the track. The way it uh, stood up today, it was very good, and I think that produces good racing. Um, we won the league, yeah, it was good. We got a bit of a hammer in both days, but, <laughs> but we won. So, yeah, it's been quite good, really. A bit hectic and tiring, but uh, it's over now. Hectic and tiring, but I think everybody would agree with me that you are becoming the Mr. Entertainer on the grass now. It's terrific to see. You know you've got a great deal of support out there, but is there any little secret to the way in which you perform on the grass? I don't know, really. <laughs> just keep at it, I suppose, and just keep self fit and just try and do as best as you can. Well, of course, we've got a couple of big meetings coming up in the near future. The Ace of Aces is at the end of October, then you'll be back in this part of the country with the Bonfire Burn Up, I hope. Yeah, I've got a couple of big meetings coming up, the Aces and the Burn-Up, which are always two good meetings, and uh, hope they get good crowds in. They're both two good clubs, and they deserve the support. And uh, it's only been done once. Both have been won by Chris Morton, but let's hope it'll be done again sometime. <laughs> <laughs> well, no predictions there at all, Steve. But as I would say, once again, a round of applause for our three solo winners, Simon Cross, Paul Fry, and Steve Schofield. Well, we got them all there in the end, didn't we? 
And what was I saying earlier on? I was saying about the sidecar competition, wasn't I? A hard fought thing. We've talked about trial stars. We've talked about the fact that they all performed extremely well this afternoon. Let's do no more messing about. Let's get the winners up here on the Rossum, finishing in third place in the sidecar competition, Russelling and Paul Yorich. must have been a little bit daunting was the fact that Russell and Paul were actually following their spare bike around. It was a change of bike. <laughs> no, I didn't. He thought I wasn't going to say that, but <laughs> it was a change of bike from the V-twin power to multi-power for what can only be described as a man that's really shown us many, many times. He is a master of this sport. He's finished in second this afternoon, but I'm sure if we keep encouraging him, he's not going to give up. I'm sure we're going to see him winning things again. It is, of course, Steve Smith and Keith Wall. second and third up here what we do need is of course the winners of the competition and I want to hear one of the biggest round of applause we've heard so far this season for the winners of the right hand sidecar competition they've had their noses rubbed in the dirt they come out in the rerun and they've come out in the final and they've shown everybody the way home a great victory in the Battle of Hastings this year for Roger Misa and Shane Arthur taken and I think we've got to have a quick word with this man because uh, well in fact I think I might have a quick word with him over there as well because I'm interested about this loaning of bikes and things but Roger not the best of days you might say that as the day went on but I suppose I've got to raise the subject again it looked to me like the old traditional getting out in the loose the front wheel locked up but was that how you saw it? Well no not really um, it's easy for me to sort of praise everything and say everything went my way, but really it didn't. My accident was because of a tyre blowing out. The guy in front of me had a puncture, and I'm sorry, but as much as I believe that the racing is probably closer, a lot more exciting for the spectators, I really don't think that trials and speedway tyres are the right way to go for safety reasons. Until they produce a tyre that is safe, then I won't advocate racing on them, even though I do believe that the racing is much closer and much more exciting for everybody, but the safety has got to come in there somewhere. Well, indeed, I think that's what I was trying to hint at this afternoon, and I uh, appreciate that everybody has fully understood exactly what you're saying, Roger. I obviously hadn't appreciated that Russell did pick up a puncture in front of you. We've had far too many this afternoon, and obviously I'm sure this is going to lead on to many other discussions. But at the end of the day, I was pleased to see you get up out of the dirt, and I was pleased to see Shane get up out of the dirt, and a victory, a good result. Well, yeah, I think we ache, we ache in places I never thought that I had muscles because I, I'm the original 10-stone weakling, but it's nice to see that Steve Smith has changed his mind and rode a multi. Steve, go back to the twin. It's much better. I, I don't want you going that quick again. Well, there you are, Steve. I, I want to say quickly, Steve, can I have a quick word with you? Because I'm very interested to know what's going on with this. But there's a lot of people out there who say, no, if you want to ride a V-twin, just watch Steve Smith. He'll tell you how it goes. Does this mean you're moving over to multi-power? No, it doesn't, and I'd just like to uh, thank Russell uh, very much for lending me his bike today. We, uh, we were due to take the engine out anyway today, to be, to be honest, and uh, we got a little mechanical knock which we didn't particularly want to uh, uh, make any worse than it was, so we decided to call it a day, and then Russell came and said, do you want to use it? Uh, 
Christ, yeah. Oh. And uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Track was uh, track was great, and it was I enjoyed the meeting. Good stuff. Thanks very much indeed, Steve. One round of applause then for our psycho winners, Russell Ingham for Urich, Steve Smith and Keith Wall, Roger Lisa and Shane Lapham. Well, there's one very quick message that if anybody picked a coat up in the centre of the circuit, one of the marshals has lost it. I think with that quick message out of the way, it just remains to say that I think that is the end of the day for me as well. I hope you've enjoyed the racing as much as I did this afternoon. We've got some big ones coming up. I hope you're all going to be there. Don't rush off. The beer tent's open. I certainly need one. These boys, I'm sure, are going to enjoy one in a few moments. We hope to see you at a glass sack very, very soon.